Hello and welcome to another video on engineering efficiency in ecostructure building operation. My name is Brad Stradman and I am the product manager for engineering efficiency. And I'm going to take you through a quick lesson on getting started using the AET or automated engineering tool to connect to ecostructure building operation servers and create a template. The agenda is pretty simple. We're going to attempt to connect to an ecostructure building operations server and then leverage an application that has already been created to make a template that we can reuse whenever that type of application is required. If you're watching this entire series of videos, you have already seen the overview of the engineering tools available for EBO. The automated engineering tool is a complementary tool that can help optimize your engineering process. Getting your office to use standards whenever possible is a great way to ensure quality and consistency across your projects. There are standards available in the library accessible through the AET, but oftentimes you have a need for an application that meets some local requirement, or maybe a large customer that wants their applications to be consistent across all their buildings. In that case, you can use the AET to easily create a template of your own content. For anyone who missed the earlier videos, the AET is available from the Exchange. It's free to download for any of the registered system integrators. Once downloaded, you can easily install the AET. The most common use case of the AET is to capture an existing application where it can be reused. Engineer once and reuse often is a great approach to engineering. With the AET installed, the first step is connecting to a server. AET can connect to any ecostructure building operations server, from live automation and enterprise servers to servers in the project configuration server available in earlier releases of EBO, and virtual servers created by the project configuration tool. If Workstation can connect to it, the AET can also. And the process to connect is pretty much the same as Workstation. Once the AET is launched and open, you can use the menu item at the top to go to server login, or simply use the icon in the upper left corner of the AET to launch the dialog to connect to the various servers. The first step is to pick the version of EBO that you wish to connect to. Just for reference, this is a pre-release version of AET, and once 2.0 is released, all mentions of SBO will be changed to EBO. Anyway, Choose your version of SBO. If you connect in one version and then wish to change to a different version, you do need to restart the AET again. Once version is selected, you log in the same way as Workstation. Provide the address, the username, and the password, and you should be able to connect. In most cases, you'll want to use HTTP. If you use HTTPS, it will require you to have a trusted certificate on the server. If you try to connect using HTTPS and no certificate is available, you'll get an error message and it will direct you to a knowledge base article that defines and describes how to create certificates. If you are connecting to an old PCS project from version 1.6 to 1.8, you would get a list of projects where you would have to choose the project you wish to access. You could also identify a domain, and for PCT projects, you also have to include the port number. We'll show you that in the demonstration. Once you've entered all the information, hit the login button and the AET will connect to your target server. Now let's see what happens in a real system. We have already installed and registered the automated engineering tool and are familiar with the user interface. To launch the AET, simply locate the icon on your desktop or find it in the start menu and launch the AET. Once the AET is started, it's pretty easy to connect. Simply use the SBO server login button on the icon toolbar, or you can use the menu for server login. In either case, it brings up the dialog that allows you to connect to a particular version of ecostructure building operation. In this case, we'll attempt to connect to a 2.0 server. I have an enterprise server running on this machine, so I'm just gonna type in localhost. I put in my username and password for that server, and then I can decide which protocol I want to use to connect. If I choose HTTPS, it will require a secure certificate. So if I attempt to log on, 
I will most likely get an error message that a server certificate needs to be created by the workstation. If I click yes, it'll take me to the knowledge base article that tells me about certificates. In this case, I'm going to click no. One thing to know about the automated engineering tool, if you do get a certificate failure, no matter what, you have to restart AET for it to clear the cache and allow you to connect to another server. So let's start restart the AET now. So the AET is started again, and I'm going to click the login button to bring up the dialog. Again, we're going to connect to a 2.0 version of EchoStructure Building Operation. I put in my username and password, and this time I'm just going to choose HTTP so I don't require a certificate to connect to that server. And I'm going to click log on. You'll notice down in the bottom corner of the AET, it gives you some indication of what's happening. And a server upload manager has started that will give you some idea of how many folders and objects it's attempting to read and reconstruct in the AET. At any time, you can click Stop Upload if you think the objects that you want to work with have already loaded, or you can stop it and load a particular part of the tree. This is particularly useful if you have a large server or are connected remotely where you might have a slow connection. Once that connection is complete, you now have all the objects listed in the system tree for the server you've connected to. If I want to connect to a different server, I simply click on the login button again and choose a different device to connect to. You'll notice the release is grayed out. If I want to change releases, I will have to restart the AET. But let's say in this case, I want to access a PCT project. Again, just like before, I simply need to indicate the address, the username, and password to be able to log into that virtual server. If you're not familiar with PCT, the project configuration tool looks something like this. I've got a project open, and I have a Automation Server Premium already running. If I want to connect to it, I have to connect to the appropriate IP address. That IP address can be found in the Properties window of the Project Configuration Tool. The IP address in this case is 192.168.56.4. But I need more than just the IP address. I also need a port number. And again, I have to choose between HTTP and HTTPS. So in this case, I'm going to choose 5,700. If I chose this, again, a certificate would be required on this server in order to log into it. So I can use that information to fill in the address for my automated engineering tool. 192.168.56.4 and the port number, which I separate with a colon, is 50700. Again, I need the username and password for that particular server, and I click Log On. The System Upload Manager again tells me that I'm connecting and it's starting to load the folders. And now it's done connecting to that particular server. And my system tree shows all the content that's available in that particular automation server. So connecting to any server is much like Workstation. If you can connect to it with Workstation, you can connect to it with the AET. Now that we're connected, let's make a template from an existing application that exists in our target server. Creating a template is a pretty simple process, but first we should identify what content can be captured in an AET template. Templates can be created that contain almost any standard EchoStructure building operation objects, including values, programs, graphics, as well as all the binding information. You can create templates from applications you have developed for automation servers and I.O. modules, and from multi-purpose controllers, including all models of the MPC and MPV. In addition, you can create templates from IA series MNL and MNV controllers, Continuum B3 series controllers, and Zenta controllers, such as the Zenta 121, and LAN device templates. If you can capture the content, you can create a template. It is always advised that you test your templates after creation to make sure they have been created as you expect. The process to create a template is really pretty straightforward and simple. We've already connected to our server that has the application content that we want to make into a template. Now I can simply click on the Create Template button 
select the content that I wish to include in that template, select the location to save my template to, add some other information if I desire, and save my template to my computer. Since we've already connected to our server and our system tree is already loaded, we can use the file menu to create a new template. Or we can simply click on the green database icon in the toolbar. Both will bring up the Create Dialog template, where we can continue the process. You need to give your template a name and choose where you want to save that template. By default, it'll use the default location you have set in your settings. Once you have named the file, you need to select which content you wish to save. You can select from any part of the tree, and multi-select is supported. So you can use control click and shift click to select multiple folders. There are other settings you can adjust and other information you can complete. You can include document objects in your templates. You can choose to include external links. Maybe your application is linked to a value that sits outside the application, like maybe an enable signal or an outside air temperature. The template could keep the link, and then when using the template later on, you would have an indication that that external binding still exists. In addition, you can give your template a formal name, add a description and a version, and even provide some details on history. If you use the library manager, all that information can be used to help your users take advantage of this template. When all the information is filled in, Simply click the OK button at the bottom of the dialog, and the AET will begin to create the template. If it finds any errors during the process, it will give you a message, and you can evaluate and choose whether to continue or not. The process is pretty simple, so let's take a look at a live example. So the AET is already connected to a server. In this case, it was an automation server that's located in a PCT project. Let's take a look at what's in that particular server. I'm going to pull out Workstation here and log in to that virtual automation server. You'll notice Workstation looks slightly different when connected to a virtual ASP. But in here we have a full application. Someone has already engineered uh, the full Floor 1 air handling unit complete with all the documentation and configuration guides, all the programs, all the alarms and trends, and all the graphics. Everything here is complete and ready to be used on a job. And this happens to be a building that has multiple floors, so I'll need multiple versions of this. That makes it a prime candidate for an AET template. So let's go back to the AET. I've already connected to that automation server. To create a template is quite simple. Up here on the icon toolbar is a Create New Template button. I can also go to File New and say New Template. It brings up the Create Template dialog, and it's a pretty simple process to create this template. First thing I must do is locate a spot on my hard drive where I want to save this template to. By default, it puts it in the default location that's indicated in my settings under the help menu. I'm going to call this one AHU Acme. So I give it a name and I save it. The second field here is for 1.6 and earlier. If you're creating templates with any version past 1.6, you don't need to use this particular field. It can be ignored. The second step in the process is to select the nodes and objects that you want to include in your template. This allows me to pick any piece of the network tree here and include it in my, this particular template. I could select an individual folder, an individual object. I can use the control button with the right click to select multiple folders. Or I can simply collect, select the highest folder in the tree and everything underneath it will also be included. So in this case, I want the entire application and everything in its folder underneath it but I also want the entire I.O. bus, where all my I.O. modules are. So I'm going to select, using the control button, both of those folders. There's some other things I can do. I can make some selections here 
about including documents or overriding existing output. Again, that only applies to pre 1.6. I can include external bindings. I can do some things with IO objects and include system folder objects if I wanted to. Uh, in this case, I don't have any. I can also give the template a more descriptive name, give it a version number, and I can apply a country code or culture code. Uh, basically, what country and what language am I speaking? And then I can give it a description. This description may help a future user understand what's in the template. Or if it's a new version, I can give it some history that says what I've changed in this particular template. Once that's all done, I simply click OK. And the AET will use the workstation SDK to do an error check and to start creating the .db file. Once complete, the dialog will disappear and my template has been saved to my template directory. If I want to check and make sure that template is correct, I can simply come here to the little database icon and open that template. By default, it'll go to my default directory. There is my AHU for Acme and I can open it up. Once open, I can take a look and make sure everything I wanted included in my template has been included. I can take a look at the object view and see if all the objects I expected to see are here, as well as the properties I expected to be set. You'll notice they're all in red. That's simply because I'm still connected to that target server. So it knows that these objects already exist in that server and is telling you that they're duplicated. Same thing applies in the folder view. These are yellow because these folders already exist in the target server. If I were to change one of the names or use them on a different server, these would turn to green. But it captured my IO bus and it captured all the folders that I had told it to select. Uh, I see all the IO in the IO view and I can even see the first graphic that's in the application or view the flow and see if everything's there that I expect to be there. So creating a template is a very simple process. Simply select the content that you wish to store and save it in the template. So now that you've created your template, what do you do with it? The templates are saved as .db files and are located on your hard drive in the folder you chose or set up. You can distribute and share those files with anyone. You can email the files or store them on a central server where other engineers can access them. As long as they have a registered version of the AET, they can use your templates. In addition, you can request your own AET private library. Send off a request to aet.support at schneiderelectric.com and they can create a private library that you and your designated users can access. It allows you to leverage the accessibility and version control capabilities of the library while still keeping your templates secure. Simply request the private library, identify your group of users, and designate someone to manage your templates. Then you can continue to manage your library independently of the global standards. So that is a quick overview of how you can use the AET to connect to a server and create a template. The next video in the series will show you how to reuse templates and take advantage of some of the tools in the AET to quickly modify the application as needed. If you ever need support, don't forget, there is a support link accessible directly from the AET menu, or you can always email aet.support at schneider-electric.com. Also, don't forget, all the latest and greatest information is available on the Exchange. It should be your first stop for information and training. Thanks for watching the Engineering for Extrastructure Building Operation videos, where we are always trying to make you more efficient. Have a great day. Thank you.